two men walk into the octagon. Only one will walk out. Well, unless you count the referee, and if there's a big old melee at the end of a brawl, there's more coming out. Hello, welcome to Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about all things MMA and UFC. Even though there are a lot of fight promotions out there, I'm really entranced by the way the UFC does their thing. The next UFC event is their 500th event. Go UFC and go Dana White and his partners. Okay, so let's go into um, a little bit of MMA lore and facts. Now, I think I'm gonna start off with the pound for pound weight classes. And um, instead of going by each division, I'm simply going by fighter, their division, and their statistics. So this is, uh, ranking is from Fight Matrix, I believe. Oh, I think the males is typology and the females is, no, the male, the male pound for pound I got from Fight Matrix and the females from typology. Let's go into it. John Jones, light heavyweight. Ooh, I put his, it must be a 21-1-0. That's his, um, that's his statistics for a fight. Uh, Henry Cejudo, bantamweight, 15-2-0. Demetrius Johnson, bantamweight, 29-3-1. Khabib Namagadoff, light heavyweight, 28-0-0. Stipe Mikovic, heavyweight, 19-3-0. Max Holloway, featherweight. 21, 4, and 0. Kamara Usman, welterweight, 15, 1, and 0. Tony Ferguson, light, lightweight, 25, 3, and 0. Daniel Cormier, heavyweight, 22, 2, and 0. Joseph Benavides, flyweight, 28, 5, and 0. Alexander Volkanovsky, 21, and 0. Francis Gananu, Heavyweight, 14, 3 and 0. Kiyoji Hiraguchi, Bantamweight, 28, 3 and 0. Tyrone Woodley, welterweight, 19, 4 and 1. Colby Covington, welterweight, 15, 1 and 0. So when I say Kamin on the gate off, light heavyweight, 28, 0, 0, means he's at 21, oh, pardon me, 28 wins, uh, 0 and zero losses, and I can't remember what the other number is. I'm still learning. Okay, so for the women's pound for pound rankings, here we go. Amanda the Linus Nunes, 18-4-0. Valencia the Bullet Shevanko, 18-3-0. Chris Cyborg, 21-2-0. Thug Rose Namunis, 8-4-0. Jessica Basha Estaca, Andre, and, Andre, 27 and 0. Magnum, Willy Zhang, 21 and 0. Joanna Jusevix, Jusevix, 15, 3 and 0. Jermaine, the Iron Lady, they ran me, 3, 9, 3 and 0. Holly, the Preacher's Daughter, home, 12, 5 and 0. Tatiana Suarez, 8, 0 and 0. And Jewel, the Jewel Bud, 13. Two and O. Oh. All right, so there's our pound for pound rankings. The women's as of yesterday, the men's as of September 15th, 2019. Right on. Now, um, this big fight that's coming up is uh, a very intriguing, it's one of the fights of the century. It's, uh, to me, it's even bigger than uh, Kona and Nate or Khabib and Kana. This is Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal uh, throwdown that's gonna happen at Masquerade Garden, All Saints Day. or well, I think it's Day of the Death, November 2nd this year. Now, my siblings aren't really into MMA, but I cleverly asked my sister Laura to identify a James Brown song for me at the beginning of Mick Smalley Walfrey's excellent video, Grand Theft Hype involving Jorge Macedal and Ben Askren. Mick Smalley Whopper makes some of the finest videos that you'll ever see about MMA. Uh, I love his work. 
I'm an eager student of his. We end up watching the video with the volume down, but I could see me sister Laura's eyes keep glancing over. The whole head mass flow and Ben Askren fight was a, um, it was heartbreak for Ben and it clinched Jorge's reputation as a bad bleeper bleeper. Words, I, I mean, this is basic cable, I wish I could say those words, but I don't really feel like cursing on the air. At any rate, Nate came out of retirement, Nate Diaz fought Anthony Pettis in a unanimous decision and then said to Dana, we need a uh, bad, a BMF title, meaning bad mother bleeper uh, belt. So this event is actually called the bad mother bleeper belt because both these guys are incredible scrappers. And that, I'm using Jorge's term. Now, uh, let's talk about both Nate and Jorge for a hot second. Nathan, Nathan Donald Diaz was born April 16, 1985. He has fought for World Extreme Cage Fighting, Strike Force, and Pancras. He won the Ultimate Fighter number 5, and he taught, has tied with Joe Lozon for the most UFC bonus awards. They both rank second in that. Uh, 15 total and he's also had the highest paid per view until uh, the UFC 229 event which featured Khabib and Connor. He is no, uh, his ranking is number six welterweight as welterweight. Uh, he went to Tokei High School and he started training at 11 with his older brother Nick Diaz who I've featured on my uh, episode of Octagon St. Laveau called Leo Time. He returned to the UFC this past August, August 17th, UFC uh, 241, where he fought Anthony. He runs a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school in Stockton and he's been a vegan since he was 16. He has won 30 matches. He's had 30 matches, won 20 of them with 11 losses. Kana, McGregor being one of those losses. He's six feet, weighs 170 pounds. He has fought lightweight and welterweight. His reach is 76 inches. His stance is softball, and his um, mode of fighting is boxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Jiu and he's trained with uh, Cesare Gracie. Now, let's look at Jorge Masvidal. He was born November 12, 1984. He has fought for the uh, fight franchises Bellator, Strike Force, Shark Fights, and Victory Road. His nickname is Game Bread. Uh, he's a welterweight out of Miami, Florida. He's Cuban and Peruvian, went to St. Brendan High. His style is kickboxing. He's been with the UFC since uh, 2003. He has had 47 matches. 34 wins, 13 losses, uh, one of those losses to Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who we will at some point feature on the show. His style is kickboxing, he's 5'11", and his reach is 74 inches long. All right, so now we know a little bit about these two very interesting fighters. There's no trash talking here, it's all about the scrap. There's a mutual respect between both of them, which did it bring tears to my eyes? I guess it did a little bit. Uh, during the presser, Nate came out first and stood until Jorge came out and they both sat down together. Jorge was dressed fantastic. I mean, he looked great. White suit, red shirt. Nate, in his own way, looked great too. He had black t-shirt, black jeans, and a baseball cap, but uh, he still looked awesome. However, Jorge's outfit took the cake, okay? So they'll be fighting in Madison Square Garden. The presser sound was horrible. And I really, I enjoyed the YouTube comments because everyone was like, <laughs> as usual, the mics aren't working. And someone else wrote, I need a job. UFC, I'll work for you. I will get your sound, sound right, okay? But that was a huge space that the press conference was in. In the background, I saw the Brooklyn Bridge. It looked like they were actually 
on a platform outside with the bridge in the back of them, but you know it was just uh, uh, special effects or something like that. Now, Jorge is up for Fighter of the Year, and in my next episode, I want to talk about uh, great moments of UFC and who is who who is Fighter of the Year. It's funny that he's up for it because I keep thinking about how Chris Cyborg uh, helped develop a couple villages in Africa. Jorge's flying kick to Ben Askren's head. Nate coming out of retirement. Um, uh, and the, the downside too, um, Connor's McGregor's whiskey business. And there are a couple other fighters who are just, oh, Max Holloway and Tony Ferguson. So for me right now, how I feel about it personally, Jorge is my fighter of the year. But um, that's only because he was coming off that win with Darren Till, the fighter who wanted to fight him, Ben Askren talked a lot of trash talk, insinuated that Jorge was a chicken, a coward, yellow, you name it, it was it. And then uh, Jorge made UFC history by knocking the man out in a record-breaking record -breaking knockout. It was, uh, if you blinked, you missed it. So at this particular press conference, both fighters again, stress the fact that it's not about trash talk. The journalists who were asking the questions, they didn't really ask that great question. Some of them, uh, I thought, you can't, you all are repeating yourselves. And check out the press conference. I'm, I'm not going to go into it on air, but uh, the gal with the leather and the nails, if I ever make it to the show, I'll make sure that I'm dressed to my nine. She looked fantastic. Okay, so... Uh, the fact that Nate has created this bad bleeper bleeper belt, uh, it's he he's he, the Diaz brothers. They they make history in my eyes. To me, uh, they both are vegans. They both are cannabis smokers. Uh, they made. 2018 and 2019 are very interesting for me as a novice uh, MMA fan, even though Nick has retired. I will say that at the press conference, one of the journalists got booed by asking Nate, how can you say you're tough when you're vegan? The guy got booed. I don't, I don't, I don't blame the people, but I wouldn't have booed him. But that was, it was inappropriate. Uh, I was raised being against child, me and my siblings, and probably some, most of you all were also. And you're very fit without the extra protein on your body. Uh, that's, that's how I look at it. For me, eat what makes you feel good, eat what you eat. I eat, I just got into lamb. I will uh, probably not give up meat anytime soon, but I can totally res respect a vegan stance about not eating meat, number one. And if they're a fighter, that is incredible. So at the press conference, the fans and the press, everyone looked happy. Everyone is happy to see these two guys, the uh, consummate professionals. Nate has fought and tutored with the UFC for years about getting paid. Uh, the way he should, and there's a very famous video uh, clip of when um, a wrestler there, uh, uh, CM Punk, went into his MMA debut, and the soundbite went viral. Later, Nate was seen as a prophet because he said, look, this WWE guy is coming into our turf. I've been working here for peanuts, fighting for peanuts, and this guy's gonna make more money than anyone in the room um, because he's a big draw uh, and it's not fair. So I think that's one of the reasons why the Diaz brothers um, retired a bit. 
I'm not sure it might have been other reasons, but I'm glad that he's going to be at MSG, Madison Square Garden this November, fighting another man who doesn't really care about the trash talk. He's there because he means business and it's for the business. So kudos to both of them and I wish them both of luck. Uh, both guys are so well liked by the fans that yes, you can root for two fighters at the same time, but only one will win. One man walks in that oct two men walk in that octagon, but one will walk out the winner. May the best man win. And I think that that is just about it for me. Today here at Octagon St. Laveau, I'm your hostess Betty St. Laveau. I'll be seeing you soon. I want to thank Orca for their continued support of the show. I want to thank Mix Molly Walkery, Krenak, Mind Smash, MA on Point, and of course my man Alpaca Thesaurus for helping me travel the path of MMA UFC fever. And until next time, love you all and love everybody. Ciao.